Welcome to In Moderation. The show where we give you a moderate dose of info, sarcasm, and we already know we're not approved. Welcome back to episode five. And this is a really exciting episode because we have our very first guest on the podcast. That's right, Rob. We got, we have today for your exciting entertainment pleasure, we have Zach Cohen. Zach, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you guys? We are doing fantastic, and we're even more we're excited, excited to have you yeah. on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to be here. Excited. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of tough to know where to start, guys, but I think we should maybe start off with what Zach is probably known best for and what everybody wants to know about. So, Zach, what do you think of what, what do we, I think we should start with? What do you say? 17th century French architecture. Zach, what would you say is your favorite piece from, I don't know, 1650, somewhere around there? You know, you can kind of take it where you like. That's actually right up my alley. That's actually when meal prep was first invented. Meal, oh, oh see, there we, we go. Are, we are yeah. learning new things. Liam every asking day. the hard questions here. I would have said the Eiffel Tower because I don't know anything about it. <laughs> I'm just surprised he didn't ask you crunchy or smooth peanut butter that's no that was your question rob oh, i have questions for, me. for everyone oh okay <laughs> everyone has I, a different i feel thing. like that's that's a very sensitive topic that goes right along with politics and religion you don't yeah you don't talk we about... lost a bunch of followers after i asked that oh, yeah, yeah, I can imagine. It, which was a which was a poor decision but you know here we are but hey we but, got like I'm, five I'm sued, in india so Ooh, crunchy over here i mean mm, yeah crunchy I'm going crunchy. <laughs> Anywho, I guess well, maybe we should actually talk about what people probably want to know. If you didn't know, Zach is probably most well, you'd say most well known for the, your meal prep videos, right, Zach? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I think, you know, starting Great. off, starting off somewhere, awesome. I think is a good place to start is Zach. How, how do you get started when you have a meal prep idea, when you want to do a meal prep video, mm -hmm. where do you start? Do you start with like, okay, we're going to start, I'm going to need some protein. I'm going to need it low calorie. Do you start with a specific ingredient? I'm just kind of curious about your process. Um, I mean, I've been doing it for a while now, so I, I do a variety of meal preps, you know, different protein sources, um, you know, different starch sources, different veggies. Um, so, that, but there's always three criteria that I, I always try to, hit with every single one of my recipes. High protein, low calorie, and affordable. If you watch any of my videos, it's, oh, yeah. you've probably heard it a million times. Yeah. Um, so those are the three criteria I try to touch on. Um, it's not that my meals are specifically meant for weight loss, um, but they, you know, they can help. Um, you know, but even if you're trying to build muscle, you know, the high protein is going to help with that. But the big thing I'm really passionate about is the affordable um, right. approach. Yeah, I love and, that um, it's affordable. Yeah, you know, there's this misconception that eating healthy, um, you know, is only for the rich and, and privileged. And um, I just, I, I don't believe in terms healthy and, and unhealthy foods. Um, so I try to, uh, you know, kind of break that stigma. And I'm sure that's probably someone's hearing that for the first time. So I think we all say that a lot, but just to kind of break it down a little bit. You know, when people hear that, they say, oh, so you're saying that an apple is just as healthy as a bag of Doritos. What we're saying is yeah. <laughs> that no individual food is unhealthy or unhealthy, meaning as long as your diet is made up of mostly nutritious foods, you can eat any food in moderation. All foods can fit into a healthy diet. And because, you know, if you're eating in moderation, if you're having that cake, cookies, whatever it is in moderation, yeah. therefore, it is not yeah. unhealthy to have that in moderation therefore it is not unhealthy so there's no good or right. bad foods healthy or unhealthy that's yeah one yeah. of my favorite examples is uh often people say well this has x amount of sodium and of course we need sodium to live so you do need some sodium but the amount of sodium that's healthy for any given person is relative to their dietary needs i have a lot of yeah. followers that have postural orthostatic tachycardia yeah. syndrome yeah. Pots, yeah. and they require a lot of sodium in their diet yeah. 
So for them, having more sodium would be healthy. For someone who has heart disease, having less sodium would be healthy. So yeah. healthy yeah. is about your individual goals, which I know it kind of makes it tough on social media because we kind of just lump everyone into this main. Everyone needs to lose weight. Everyone needs low sodium. Everyone needs. It's like, no, it's it's more individualized. But, you know, that's why it's important that you, know, you just say, hey, I'm trying to make something affordable. I'm trying to yeah. make it relatively balanced. And I'm, I'm trying to make sure it has, you know, protein and fiber and all that good stuff. Yeah, healthy is it's it's a very subjective term, and um, you know, like you said, what's healthy for one person might be very unhealthy for another. Um, yeah. And I I always use the you know the the scenario that if I were to eat one slice of pizza, I'm not instantly unhealthy or sick in any way. Just like if I ate one salad, I wouldn't instantly become healthy. Um, you know, so it's all about overall dietary patterns. Right. As long as that pizza doesn't have pineapple on it, then you are healthy. But if agree. you have it, now that, you will... that I agree with. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. We, we have a full healthy. consensus here. Yeah. It's official. No pineapple on pizza. <laughs> you will be yeah. unhealthy because you will feel terrible and your taste buds will be angry at you. <laughs> and so it is unhealthy. <laughs> So Zach was talking about how when he starts, he always starts off with protein, protein and fiber. These things are very important because a lot of the times in many meals that are very delicious, they are made up of two things. <laughs> that is simple carbs and fats. If you think of anything like ice cream, cookies, cakes, all of those things, chips, it's all yeah. simple carbs and fats. And that's what just makes it very easy to over consume. People we always say this is a bad food. It's bad in that it's very easy to eat a whole tin of Pringles. What is that? What is it called? Yeah. The roll of Twinkle? Whatever, whatever Pringles are, you know, the, the whatever yeah. it is, the tube, the tube of Pringles. You, I could easily eat the whole thing. So once when you, you pop, go for, you can't stop. Yeah. Once you pop, yeah, you know, it's like they just shove it right in your face right away. They're like, yeah, you try. You're going to fail. It's yeah, amazing. the potato launcher. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's why but I put those, it in the tube so you can just are... <laughs> tip it up and angle it directly into your mouth. That's why yeah. it is in the tube. <laughs> So, yeah. you know, that's why, I, you know, protein and fiber, these things are important. So that's a good place to start. Um, but then after that, you know, Zach, do you have another place that you go to just trying to make it just more balanced that you just have like a, a protein, a carb, a veggie, something like that? Like, what's your next? What's yeah, your next I mean, step? I think it really all depends on it, I mean, everything depends on your goals, uh, mm -hmm. obviously, but it also depends on uh, your process. You know, if you are somebody that meticulously tracks, um, right. you would probably be more focused on a good balance of fat, carbs, and protein versus somebody who uses yes. the plate method. You know, they can look down at their plate and say, okay, yes. I can identify my protein source, my veggies, my fat. Um, so it just depends on how meticulous and uh, detailed you are uh, in your process. But um, yeah, I mean, if, if depending on if you want to keep it simple, uh, a lean protein source, mm -hmm. um, some sort of vegetable. Um, I know they say eat the rainbow, um, but there's a lot of, you know, dull, drab, great vegetables <laughs> as well. I was about um, to say there, not, there's a problem with that statement. And yeah, there's a I'm lot of a countries that, that their yeah. food is like a brown color. Even yeah. after cooking the the oranges, that comes up brown and stuff. Yeah, and so they always a, have a, a very problem dismissive with that. Term. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, um, adding adding some sort of vegetable to every meal. Um, and I get a lot of uh, flack in in my comments because what I try to do with my specific meal preps, um, because I'm going after a, a specific audience, is I want to make non diet food. Um, so I make, right. you know, uh, food court bourbon chicken, which I've seen traditionally you do a lot of copycat videos, yeah, like Applebee's, yeah, traditionally, sizzling, whatever. Yeah. So they're not going to be loaded with a bunch of veggies. So right. what I do is you can go that route. You don't have to make everything, every meal loaded with a bunch of vegetables. Exactly. I typically recommend, especially if you just don't like the like taste of vegetables, vegetables, I recommend finding a vegetable that you do enjoy Find a way to prepare it that you enjoy in the air fryer, right. put some butter, some Parmesan cheese, something like that. Yeah. Add it on the side. That way you still have your traditional 
bourbon chicken meal, for example, you know, no, nobody wants to add a bunch of veggies to their bourbon chicken because then it just probably is, isn't going to take, taste like bourbon chicken anymore. So Are you just telling add it on me the side. not everybody likes broccoli? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love broccoli, but no, not everybody likes broccoli. Chicken, broccoli, and rice till you die. I mean, that's, I think, yeah. just the classic bodybuilder. And I, I yeah, love exactly. that so much because, like, again, you know, we get this idea of, like, everything has to have these three things. And not every yeah. meal has to. It's about your to the totality of your diet. And we all, right. I think, can find some sort of vegetable we like. And I see so many people, like, even, and even if I do a recipe video, they're like, oh, I was going to do this video until I saw it had X in it. And now I can't yeah. do it. It's like, hey, yeah. hey, hey, I've, I'm going to blow your mind. I'm going to just blow your socks off right now. You don't have to add that. You, you yeah. could omit it completely. You could add something else. Well, what else? What should I add? What do you, what do you like? Uh, I really like mushroom. Hey, you can add mushroom. There you go. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. really it. Do, people try and I don't know, just make it more complicated than it needs to be. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, I think uh, I mean, we live in a society where it, everything is demonized. You know, so oh it, a lot of a lot of our followers, they just, they just don't know what to believe anymore. So, I mean, just thinking, can I add yeah. spinach to this meal? I don't know, because I heard spinach is bad for you now. You know, so they just want somebody <laughs> reputable, somebody that they trust to tell them, hey, it's OK to add spinach <laughs> to your meal. It's not going to kill you. Oh, my. Yeah, it's got oxalates, unfortunately. It's yeah, going to yeah, calcify. Actually, yeah. It's just the nutrient yeah, I, killers. My God, like I hear, I get so many comments like, is this fine? Is this fine? Is that fine? fine? Like, it's all, it's all fine. Like how many comments have you gotten? They're just like, can you give us a list of things that we actually shouldn't eat? And it's like, hey, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost oh, like right. nobody, nobody believes when a evidence-based health professional tells you, you can eat whatever you want in moderation. That's just, it's almost unbelievable to hear nowadays. Yeah, and yeah. It, the, the list is very small. I'm going to tell you right now, the foods the foods that you're allergic to, you probably shouldn't eat those. If you're allergic to yeah. peanuts, I would recommend you don't eat those. If the food has a bunch of mold on it, I know, listen, I hate throwing food out too. I hate throwing food out. It sits in the back of my fridge. I'm like, damn it, I left this out yeah. back there long, too long. And foods you don't like, because if you don't like those things, you're not going to stick to your diet. After that... Right. Like pineapple on pizza. Yeah. And, and yes, and banana laffy taffy, but that's you know that's neither here nor there. Listen, you, you, you got to yeah. be able to just enjoy your diet and have everything in moderation. Yeah. I know that's tough, yeah. but it takes time. Yeah, today I got a comment along that line. Somebody asking me to do a video on foods that are bad for you, and I, I told them a video about foods that are bad for you is actually going to look like a video that just tells you to eat a variety of foods and not not eat something in excess basically mm -hmm. Because yeah. what's bad for you is if you eat the same thing over and over and over. I've seen some like videos that are great. They're like, okay, what if you only ate chicken, broccoli, and rice? Well, you'd be deficient in this, 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 and that, and that you wouldn't get enough of this. And it's just like, yeah. not, that would be bad for you. Like, and you'd be like, well, I don't, but those things are good. It's, you know, and that's why, and that's why people say eat the rainbows because they're trying to encourage you to eat different yeah. things. But yeah. obviously there's nuance to that and there's issues. Basically just try and have a varied diet because it'll, it'll make up for any deficiencies in any other, you know. In, yeah. In when it comes to overall just dietary patterns, the three key points I always try to stress are balance, moderation, and variety. If you build your overall lifelong diet yeah. off of those three points it, you won't have any issues it's and, just you won't and i i know i've no, ranted about this before like i've ranted about basically everything in life but we live in the 21st century it is amazing the technology we have i just people like i don't know where to start and i'm like okay what do you like? And they're like, I don't know. I like asparagus. I'm like, okay, I'm going to, again, blow your mind. You go online and you look up recipes with asparagus or recipes with whatever. Meal prep with this. High protein meal with X. It doesn't matter. And it will spit out 8,742 different yeah. <laughs> recipes that you can choose from. And you go to the store and you try it. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. That's totally fine. That's life is just trying things. When I want something, I go to Pinterest and I'm just like, hey, yeah, what a meal prep with this exactly and it'll just and now you have to watch 10,000 ads but still you will eventually get to the recipe right. at the bottom there and it'll show yeah. you how to you know, how to make it try it 
If you like it, yeah, awesome. the cooks they share their food. entire life story before they get to the recipe. So yeah, <sighs> and yeah, and you could go to you can go to Chat GPT. Yeah, put in the yeah. ingredients that you like or that you have in the house or anything like that, and it'll spit you out recipes. It's yeah, insane. a lot of people in my Facebook group have been sharing recipes that they've been trying, posting pictures, and they say, "I put these ingredients into Chat GPT, and this is this is the end result." That's amazing. I love that. that is, yeah. I I think I have a new video series. I think I have a new video series. So I'm just going to put things into Chat GPT yeah. and see what happens. So Chat GPT, I I've got another... bubblegum, bananas, and <laughs> Mountain Dew. What can you make me? <laughs> I think I saw uh, Steph DeGrasso. She actually did um, a a video kind of bumping up a chat GPT recommendation versus a dietitian's recommendation. I, I believe she was using the same ingredients in it. She kind of pointed out how, you know, this AI is really cool, but it still doesn't account for a lot of things that actual human application can account for. It's That's pretty interesting. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you just put pineapple and pizza, it says nothing. We we can't yeah. do anything with that. <laughs> there is no usable food. But you know what I'd like to go back to for a second is the affordability, because we have a lot of influencers now that are suggesting people make swaps for more expensive items. Yeah. And it especially these days with the like, a lot of people have food insecurity have mm -hmm. money issues it's so important to stress that food can be affordable yeah i mean food insecurity it's it's a big deal uh not just in the u.s but you know around the world obviously and yeah. um i think social media has kind of painted this picture of these elaborate not just food but just lifestyles in general of uh you know these unattainable lifestyles that some people might look up to and they just don't realize that it's it's not only mostly bs but these are you know it's the highlight reels of of people's lives and yeah. um when it comes to food like a lot of these creators that push these more expensive products it, they're doing it uh with a fear-based mindset um they kind of dismiss the cheaper options Due to, you know, misinformation, conspiracy theories, lack of knowledge, you know, what Scary have you. chemical names. I th yeah, exactly. I think, honestly, one of the main reasons they do that is because, I was, uh, as we know, a lot of them, some some people, have invested into companies that are, you know, the competition for the, yeah. the foods Not that they're fearmongering. Not naming names. Yeah. Not naming any names. <laughs> Not to name any single possible name. But, you know, like, these it, it, it's it, the market's very saturated, very saturated right like there's there's a food for like everything so if you're coming mm -hmm. into it and you're trying to make something similar to what is already there you know like you know fruit gummies or whatever they are it's going to be tough to get into that space so really mm -hmm. the it seems like the only way to do that is to demonize them and make a product that is quote unquote better with yeah. first in class ingredients and <laughs> put the, and you know sell that for a higher price and scare people into thinking that is better so i i I honestly think that's one of the, you know, the main reasons that they do it. Yeah. And I mean, I think a lot of these content creators, they maybe don't even have anything for or against the products they're pushing or demonizing. But if you go to their profile page, they're typically selling a, a guide of safe foods that you can buy from them. And, you know, it, who knows where they get these options from if they actually do have, you know, some sort of hidden agenda behind pushing a specific product, or it's just a way to create a problem with their followers and make you believe that, oh man, I really need this person's advice. I need to invest in this product so I can find out what's what's safe and what's unsafe for me to be eating. Exactly. I think Hank Green recently said on a video, the easiest way to make money on the internet is to make you scared. Yep. And I, I just have to reiterate that because it is so true. If the people are scared, yeah. they're just more willing, you know, strong emotions of any nature. But, you know, being scared will, will absolutely work. So, I mean, so I think, you know, we've kind of hit that pretty good. But so for you, for the affordability, kind of like where would you say you kind of start to try and make it more affordable? I see you do a lot of things with like pastas and stuff like that mm -hmm. that are a little bit cheaper. Is there, you know, is it like rice? Do you kind of start with, you know, just like kind of where do you start to try and make it a little bit more affordable for people? Uh, well, first of all, I shop, shop at it. usually the cheapest grocery stores. I almost mm -hmm. exclusively do my grocery shopping at 
Walmart, Walmart or like oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Air or you know, like a uh, wholesale markets, Costco, mm-hmm. Sam's, um, and then I try to stick to typically uh, the uh, the brands that the grocery stores themselves, like local brands, um, like uh, you know, Target has I think Market Side, mm-hmm. uh, Walmart has what is it like um, Great Sam's great value. Choice or well, Great Value, yeah, great value. Yeah, great value. Yeah. Um, and then Sam's Club has yeah. Sam's Choice. Uh, Costco Kroger I think has, has Simple Truth, I believe. Some, some yeah, Simple and Truth. Aldi's yeah. Aldi's a lot of times has really mm-hmm. good deals on uh, their produce. It, they always have deals on their cheese is phenomenal. Oh, everything about Aldi. I listen, yeah. Aldi. Yeah. If you're listening, we'll all take sponsorships. <laughs> we'll all talk. About <laughs> exactly. it. But yeah, people so, yeah. do not feel bad about buying the cheaper brands. We all do. No, it. absolutely not. Yeah. And then uh, I almost never buy anything organic um, just because, oh again, big marketing push. There's nothing inherently better or worse about organic versus but non-organic. Zach, so. the organic produce has organic pesticides. We all right, think yeah. the organic <laughs> pesticides are way better. I've been told by Clean Easy Eating Gazette, okay? Yeah, exactly. I've heard it. <laughs> But there are other things you can do to kind of save. There's a lot of great apps out nowadays um, that you can actually like scan your receipt and get money back. Uh, One that I use is Ibotta. Uh, You just scan your receipt. You can actually go through and uh, add things to you. It's like a modern day couponing. Uh, My grandma was really big in in couponing and she used to save tons. Yeah. Yeah, Anybody in Canada, there's uh, Nielsen scanning. Nielsen scanning. Nielsen. Nielsen scanning. Nielsen scanning. Nielsen. Scanning. Nielsen. <laughs> but yeah, Nielsen has a, a scanning app that you can do the roughly the same thing. You scan your foods in and you gain points and then you can redeem those points for nice. gift cards or air miles okay. or stuff like that. And so I know nice. most like grocery stores are a lot of the big ones, at least now your Kroger and whatnot. Um, they will have like coupons in an app. Basically, you go mm-hmm. in, it's like yeah. weekly deals. They'll usually put them at the front and just like two for three or whatever, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great way to save money. Um, yeah. I mean, you really like it's amazing to me when I would say like, oh, you can buy store brands. People are like I can. What? Yeah. I was always told that I'm like, what? It's like made in the same factory. Like it's yeah, like this, exactly. they literally yeah. just put them in different boxes. Yeah. And I mean, obviously it, it comes down to your dietary preference, your needs and your budget. Um, so if a store-bought brand, you know, checks all of those boxes, then then go for it. But, you know, there's some people that swear by a specific chicken from a specific store. Like I've met people that, you know, won't eat walmart chicken they swear by Publix and vice versa yeah we all have those things that we we like i need the 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 name brand i need the name brand like me yeah it's blue diamond almonds there's just like i've I've tried other ones the blue diamond almonds the salt and vinegar my goodness those are the best yeah it's so good i like the thai the thai chili thai sweet chili yeah yeah those two are both of those are up there cream bar okay i could tell we could talk all day about blue diamond flavors but well um, you can (laughs) <laughs> I listen. I absolutely. Can. They're so you gotta good. try. You gotta try the Walmart brand coconut cashews. Those are oh. amazing. I don't know if I saw Walmart, but I saw a different like a name brand, I was like Planners or whatever. But there was like cinnamon sugar cashews, and I was like, this is dangerous. I could yeah. eat <laughs> all of these cashews. Like that right sounds now. delicious. Yeah. But speaking of cheap, that's why I love. Listen, I'm telling you, like pe- peanuts are underrated. We were talking about peanut butter earlier, and I just want to bring it up. They are so underrated. They're like they're like the cheapest food. They got like protein, fiber, and you know, he- healthy fats all in one. It's like a balanced thing. If yeah. You're not allergic to them. They're amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah. So you talked about like you know just trying to shop for, so shop for like um ways to save money. Save but money. then right. is there like specific ingredients that you kind of start off with? I'm just kind of curious. Like you, you know, um, potatoes. I mean, or... everybody knows chicken is, is king when it comes to you know cheap protein sources. So I usually get the biggest pack of chicken possible. Right. Um, you know, but sometimes people feel like they're eating too much chicken. So I'll throw in the occasional you know ground beef, ground turkey. Yeah. Um, you know, stuff like that. But um, I, I do a lot of chicken mostly because it's, it's not only is it versatile, but it's also cheap. Do you wow. ever buy a whole chicken and portion it up yourself? 
Uh, I do not. I have, but not for meal prep. That's another uh, thing. That, that's like a kind of a hidden sub point that I try to touch on is convenience and you know time management. I know that not everybody is is going to go and make their own bread to make a sandwich, yeah. so I go out and buy the loaf. <laughs> Oh right. my god! Seriously, I get so many people. They're like, "Why don't you just tell teach people how to make bread and then make the mayonnaise and then make this and then make them yeah. like, who are you talking to? Do these people is that all they do? This is their whole life." Yeah, when I'm scrolling TikTok, like the the content creators, the food creators that start off with a shot of the final product, I'll see it and I'm like, "Ooh, that looks good." And they say, "You're going to start by adding flour," and I'm like, "So I." <laughs> Yeah, like, I mean, I literally watched one the other day that was like flour and Greek yogurt, and that's all it was for bread. And I'm like, mm, I'm still on the fence. Like, that's yeah. two ingredients. That's a lot. <laughs> Not everybody is a cook. <laughs> right, exactly. So, yeah, ex I've done the breaking down the whole chicken, but it's just like, it's too much. And yeah, honestly, it's a lot of work. one of the reasons I started, I, you know, I named myself the plant slant. I My diet is like 90%, you know, whole plant foods, probably 80, 90%, somewhere around there. One of the reasons is because it's cheap. Like, it's mm -hmm. so cheap. That's why yeah. I love it. I, I, eat, I eat beans in some form every single day. Like, whether it does, you I know, think that's another misconception. A lot of people think that being vegetarian is expensive. But I that's think right. that when they think vegetarian, they think health. When they think health, they think organic. So their mind right. just goes to the to most Panera's expensive place that they can think of. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that are like fifteen dollars for this time. Like, whoa, shh, come on now. Let's yeah. make a burrito with beans and rice and Yeah, you want an expensive it. diet, go carnivore. That's holy that'll break and the bank. Yeah. <laughs> and they're always like it has to be the grass fed stuff. And I'm the like, I guess fed, I'll yeah. to cancel all my subscriptions. Sorry, yeah, Netflix. Full, I'm full going carnivore. Beef at every meal. Yeah. <laughs> oh man thank goodness the the guy i watch has a promo code for all the meat but anyway yeah, exactly um <laughs> he's so, doing you yeah. a favor <laughs> thanks bud appreciate it um so, so yeah that's one of the reasons i decided to go you know more towards the plant place is because it's, it's cheaper like tofu is like super cheap for me and like i know like mm -hmm. a lot of people don't love it but like you know baked tofu seared it's it yeah. actually is pretty good and it's very cheap so yeah you know like definitely beans potatoes and i know like people always like oh carb sources like listen we're, this isn't the carbs don't make you fat episode but also carbs don't make you fat so like right, let's yeah. just throw that yeah. in there if we could do that real quick oh yeah you just have to give that tofu a good marinade think ahead of time right exactly a good marinade can save can save a lot of things um yeah, yeah i've seen some pretty tasty uh recipes for tofu i've tried it a couple times it was it was good i just i just eat chicken so <laughs> Right. And, so, and but again, you know, we talk about just like mixing it up and just buying a, yeah. a variety of things. But like, you know, having a meal prep set up, you know, you get the big thing of chicken. So now you know what you're doing. You can portion it out mm -hmm. for the whole week, you know. Yeah. Because um, yeah. that's where I see a lot of people kind of not fail, but struggle, I guess, is, you know, mm -hmm. like, oh, I go to work. I go to school. I go to these places. I don't have a meal. All that's available is this. So like meal prepping for that is just it's it's key. It really helps so much. Yeah, I'm a, I mean, I'm a huge advocate for, for meal prepping, obviously, because, you know, that's my content. But, I mean, there's there's so many advantages to it. Like, it's not just about, you know, having something, you know, ready for the week so you don't have to worry about it. It's how many times have you been at work and everybody in the office wants to go to a restaurant. Now you're, if you're on a, a journey towards weight loss, building, you know, whatever your health and fitness goals are, a lot of times those portions and calories aren't conducive with your specific goals. So now every day, all week long, you're going to this restaurant and eating this meal that may not be conducive towards your goals. When if you had meal prep, you could just tell them, hey, you know, I brought my lunch. But so it also takes out a lot of the decision fatigue that people face when they're on a health and fitness journey. Like if you, you know, get up at 5 a.m., send the kids to school, go to work for 10 hours, come home. The last thing you want to think about is, is what's what's for dinner? What am I going to make for dinner? When if you can set aside a day and time to meal prep, you already have that done. So it's it's one less spoon you have to worry about in your drawer of spoons. You know, it's it's yeah. it's so much it it takes so much out of that decision fatigue process that it's it's extremely helpful. I know that decision fatigue well. I'm somebody who doesn't do a lot of meal prepping. I, I of course, like I really enjoy cooking and all that. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of from scratch. And 
again, like as somebody who does do a lot of from scratch stuff, I want to also emphasize you do not need to do that. You can go buy the bread. I like making bread. That's me. You can go buy the bread. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. when you're opening the fridge and you're trying to figure out what to make, it's you get that fatigue. Like you said, it's like, yeah. okay, I, I made this last time. I don't know what I want to make. Uh, I, uh, you get that. I wish I had just made everything in advance, could throw it in the oven. Boom, done. I can sit down and eat and enjoy life. That's why. Yeah, people... and I mean, sometimes you don't even need to do full on meal prep. If 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 you're just starting out, you can prep your veggies for the week and then just, you know, pick your protein for the week. You can do the opposite. You can prep. You know, I have, I have a video showing how you can throw a bunch of chicken in the crock pot. Chicken is a blank canvas. It's going to take on whatever flavor you add to it. You can throw a bunch of chicken in the crock pot, portion it out, season it with three, four, five different seasonings. And you have literally five different protein sources yeah. for the week. And you can just, you know, add, you know, make one into a sandwich, one into a salad, one with rice. I think that's a great place to start. It's kind of like a, a, a partial meal prep where, yeah. you, I mean, you could literally do like go to the store and get like frozen mix, mixed vegetables or something like that. And then you have that set aside and then you yeah. just meal prep, like you said, the chicken or whatever it else you're, you're meal prepping. And then you can add to it. You can put it together in two, three minutes, you know, yeah. five minutes at home. Cause I think that's what a lot of people do. You know, you get home and you just don't want to make decisions. So you just go out to eat. You just go to like McDonald's yeah. or whatever it is. Order when a I was pizza. in the hot, yeah, order pizza. When I was in the hospital, there was really not much to eat. I ate Wendy's most, multiple times when I was at the hospital when my wife was giving birth. And I was like, man, not only is this getting tiring, and I'm like, wow, what am I getting again? Like the same thing. It's expensive, yeah. you know? You're like, yeah. you're just doing yeah. that every time you're paying money. So, like, if you can just find something at the store that is pretty quick, like, for, you know, I love the frozen section. I'm going to say that a bunch of times. But, you know, they also have them just in packages. You know, the the, the grain packets that you microwave for 90 seconds. You know, those, you know, mm -hmm. the rice or whatever it is. You know, have just that. And then just meal prep just maybe your protein, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of the, uh, the Wendy's getting expensive, expensive, circling back down to the affordability is, you know, a lot of people think, well, I don't have the money to do X, Y, and Z or eat mm -hmm. this way. My challenge to you, if you feel like that is you, go back and look at the last three months mm -hmm. of credit card statements and yeah. add up all of the fast food, all the all of the restaurants, all of the weekend drinking. Add those things up and tell me how much you're actually spending on food. You, it'll be yeah. a lot more than you would spend on meal prepping. I can guarantee that. Oh, yeah, that. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, you go, it's like $15 for a meal. And you're like, my God, man, whatever happened to the $5 foot long, it's gone. And I'm, I yeah. went to when I went to Subway the other day. I'm like, it's like 13 bucks for a sub. What the heck? McDonald's doesn't even have a dollar menu anymore. It's gone. Oh, man. Like, it's, it, I mean, yeah. it's, it's the tough. convenience of it makes you just kind of not realize the cost. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, that's what you're paying for is the convenience. I mean, it yeah. tastes good too, obviously, but. Right. You know, it's almost like we're going out and paying somebody to cook for us. So, yeah. So I think it's best just like when you start off, just not to go. Because I think we see that all the time, right? People just jump into the deep end. They're like, I'm going to meal prep uh, yeah. breakfast, lunch, dinner for this entire week. And it's like, whoa, you were doing nothing before. So yeah. how about just for a few days, like uh, just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'll just have it for these three days and I'll just do one meal. Like that is yeah. a great place to start. And you can oh you can always go up from there. Like you can, yeah. you have your yep. whole life. And I know I yell this so many times, but people always want to start off crazy. And I'm like, why, why are you I'm rushing? rushing? Why right. like, don't you, how long are you going to live the next 50 years? Okay. So how about we take a few months instead of overnight? Like, yeah, please. yeah. It's about building those small sustainable habits over time, you know, and I, 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 see I, it, I see it in this field. You see it all the time. Yeah. People at new year's resolution, I'm going to the gym seven days a week. I'm going to meal prep every meal. I'm not going to eat X, Y, and Z. I'm not going to eat out. You know, I'm going to do all of these things. And then the moment they miss a day or miss a meal, they get discouraged, feel like a failure. And oh, I'll, I'll do it in 2025. Seriously, just every time. Because and all these diets we talked about, carnivore, you know, people are like, I'm only doing the 72 hour fruit cleanse. Okay, great. Yeah. Tell me how that goes. <laughs> Miserable. I'm yeah. shocked. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. But at one point there, Zach said he to, you know, you can make chicken with five different spices. There's one thing I really want to tell people here. 
It's okay to use spices. Paprika <laughs> will not kill you. Seizing your food, yes. Unless it has silicon dioxide, you want to make sure you only get the one with paprika, not the fake stuff that they... <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I mean, and it's just seasoning blends. I know that's like such a simple thing, but when I found like those dash seasonings or whatever, like you have you seen those? Act? Like it's just like a bunch of different seasoning. They got a bunch of like garlic and herb, this and that. Grab a few of those, and I just yeah. throw it in. Like literally, what I do a lot of the times, and it's so simple. Again, because I am like lazy and I don't want to do a bunch a bunch of stuff. I get one of the like frozen vegetable blends or whatever, microwave it. Right here's what, and this is super fancy. So I, you got to pay attention here. I cut it open with some scissors and I take mm -hmm. olive oil and I drizzle it in there and then I throw a bunch of spices in there and then I shake it like crazy. I just shake the whole bag up like crazy. And then I plop it on a plate with yep. whatever else I'm eating. And that's, I do that a lot. Like, cause that's I'm just like, it's simple. Yeah. It's right. It took me yeah, and I mean, they minutes. make it easy for you nowadays. Like you said, you go to any spice aisle in a grocery store and it's like, it's like half an aisle long. Like they already have the blends. They've got Mediterranean blend. They've got, you know, all these different blends that you can just fill your, your spice rack with it and just pick and choose whatever flavor you want that day. Okay. Okay. Important question. What is your guy's favorite spice, whether it's a blend or an individual spice? Garlic. Um, I might just say saffron cause I want to sound fancy. I want to be oh, like oh, the fanciest. Mr. Fancy Pants <laughs> be, over here. Did you know saffron is more expensive than gold per gram or per kilogram, whatever, per by weight? Wow. That's I know he's doing his but... best to be an influencer that promotes the expensive thing. How here. else am I going to make money? Like, I need to make money Do off this stuff. Do you have a somehow. promo code for this saffron? For sa not this saffron, but no. for a different saffron that costs <laughs> more, but if you use my promo code, it's the same price. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't like, honestly, like usually just like onion powder, garlic powder. And then I just get like yeah. a blend or whatever. You know what I love? There's, um, yeah, the dash seasoning. There's a Southwest blend. That's like one of my favorite. Okay. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Great value. Um, um, hot chili powder. Like it's a mix of different chilies and it's, it's at Walmart and it's so good. That does sound good. So I would good. say if I had to use like an actual like seasoning, not just, you know, garlic powder, onion powder, whatever, I would probably say adobo. Like I'm mm, married to a Puerto good. Rican. Oh. She introduced me to adobo and I put it on almost yes. everything. My eggs in the morning, my chicken, everything. I've started blending up those like in the blender where like when you make a sauce, like whenever anybody's like make a sauce by putting it in the blender, I'm like, I will also add some of these chilies yeah. because <laughs> holy shit that they make it so much better. Yeah. So to put a pretty bow on all this and wrap it all up, I think we should circle back to Zach's main points. To start off with was protein. Both of you, give me a protein. <laughs> go ahead, Rob. You know what? I'm, I'm going to go with Pollock here. I <laughs> Pollock. like fish. I grew up on fish. That's and that's a cheaper one. Yeah, like I'm right. Isn't Pollock and that's one like of the cheaper fishes. Yeah. Yeah, like that and tilapia get like a bad rap, but it's just like, hey, that's cheap. You know, it works for sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Zach, give me a protein besides chicken. Uh, <laughs> eggs. Eggs are a great there one. There we go. Okay. All right. How do we keep it low calorie? Give me a tip. Egg whites. Egg. There we go. I like oh, it. Awesome. Oh, dang. Rob, Rob, where do you go from Pollock? Where do I go <laughs> the, from Pollock? The, pol the white Pollocks just use the right <laughs> You know what? Cooking it without oil is a simple there you way go. to do it exactly use the yeah. spray that's a great one yeah. i like it uh and affordability how do i make my meal less expensive less expensive. buy your pollock on sale <laughs> buy, go there you go <laughs> yes no clearance section i yell at the people ask sales, me all the time my videos like, like where do you find the clearance section listen people listen i'm gonna tell you they always hide it in the back they think you don't know it they do but you do know it and you go to the back and it's usually at the ends like of the aisle or it's like with the hardware or some shit like it's in the yep. non-food section okay in, like kroger it's always in my there. walmart it's in the back where the wet restrooms and the staff doors are. Like, it's <laughs> hidden back there. You have to go f searching for it, but it is there. Seriously, they always try and hide it. Or, like, you know, and like at Kroger, a lot of the times, they'll just have, like, a reduced price on things. So when you're looking at something, if I will see, like, oh, this is very similar, but it's on sale. So I'll grab that and, like, it'll work. It's fine. It's 1% milk instead of fat-free milk when it called yeah. for that. Whatever. 
that's fine. It's cheaper. And if the clearance tag is covering up the nutritional value, it has no calories. That's what I tell myself. <laughs> that's where we're moving. Free calories, yeah. <laughs> Free calories. It's got nothing. Um, but uh, yeah, okay. I think that kind of just gives us at least a few bullet points at the end. Yeah. But I think we should just kind of wrap it up with Zach. Do you have any like, you know, hacks or just anything like little tips that you could give that maybe you do or maybe other people can do just to make meal prepping a little bit easier? The best thing you can do for meal prep is invest in a crock pot. Ooh. I swear by it, a crock pot or even an instant pot. Uh, I like crock pot because it's kind of a set it and forget it type of thing. I can throw it all in there, go to the gym, go do, you know, whatever, come back a few hours mm -hmm. later and everything is done. It's a, it's a That's dump cool. everything in, mix some pasta in at the end or, you know, serve it over serve rice it. or serve it with a side of veggies. veggies. It is, I yeah, swear nice. by crock pot meals. I've got dozens of them on my Patreon. Like I, 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 I swear by crock pot meals. There's so many recipes out there. You can just like yeah. slow yeah. cooker and yeah. then whatever you like, it could be potatoes. Yeah. It could be chicken. It could be anything. Soups, Throw all your leftovers like, in yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, and especially for like leftovers and stuff that you're like, ah, I'll just throw it all together. I've there's I made many meals where I'm just like, eh, we'll just chuck it in there, and it actually yeah, turns out yeah. pretty well. Um, but yeah, like instant pots, I do. I have an instant pot myself. I've always had trouble with the slow cooker setting. It like it doesn't even work. So yeah, yeah. I think slow cookers are great, and they're not that expensive. I feel like you can no, you can get a you can get a decent size one at Walmart for twenty bucks. Yeah, you can probably seriously. find one at a thrift store or something yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, mean, they've been around for so weird. long and the technology has not has changed. Not like, it's, right. it's a matter of whether or not it's a, a knob or digital. Yeah. I have a knob one, no fancy lights or anything, and it works perfectly fine. Most just have a little yep. hamster in there and it spins yeah. on the wheel, turns yeah. it around, <laughs> makes it warm, heats up your food, you know, all that stuff. It's And yeah, thrift stores actually, yeah, that's a good call. Like, there's usually like, oh, like waffle makers and all sorts of like, I'm gonna make my own popcorn. Like, it's yeah. that's, that's actually kind of funny. Or even Again, do not be ashamed to buy at a thrift store. I yeah. buy so much shit at thrift store. Like I am the thrift store king. I love thrift stores so much. Clothes, whatever. You buy like pants, like a straight up cast iron pan. Those things have been these things will last thousands of years. Like just snag one of those. It's awesome. Yeah. I'm a big um, fan of rice cookers as well. Oh yeah. They do make it really yeah. easy. There's they a lot of people that just swear that they can't make rice on the tr on the stove traditionally and a rice cooker takes all the guesswork out. And wash your rice. And I'm yeah, just throwing that out there because wash your wrist at least <laughs> once, a couple times. Come on, people. Okay, Zach. So if anybody's looking for you, where can they find you? Um, I am on pretty much every platform. Uh, TikTok is my is my biggest. Uh, I have an amazing Facebook support group. Uh, we just hit, I think, 49,000 members. Uh, nice. Creeping up on, on the big big five zero. And um it's it's full of amazing people. Uh, it's called Safe Space Nutrition on Facebook. Um, it, it's my baby. Uh, they're my tribe. Um, they're the ones that that keep me doing what I'm doing. So um, yeah, it's it's a great group. Um, and then I uh, I'm on Instagram, uh, YouTube, and I have a Patreon for five dollars a month. Um, you get a new recipe every single week. All the recipes come with a video and a uh, downloadable PDF with super simple easy to follow instructions and ingredients so if you enjoy my meal preps and you want more jump on over to my my patreon and check it out so you don't have a cookbook yet though right do no you? my patreon is my cookbook patreon. so do you, you don't have plans for that in the future i feel like that would be like the next so big thing on the i book. i did but here here's my thing with cookbooks right mm -hmm. the minute you buy my cookbook it's outdated because i update recipes every single week uh, so oh. for the cost of a cookbook say you buy a cookbook with you know a hundred recipes recipe in it for 50 bucks by a year's time it you've missed out on 52 more recipes plus all of the additional bonus content i yeah, i on top of the meal preps that i post every week i also post smoothies bento boxes baked oats I like that. overnight oats side wow. salads side side veggies High protein desserts, yeah. sample meal plans. I I put a lot of time and and content into my Patreon to really just give it a lot of value for five dollars. Yeah, I mean nice. that's pretty good because then you can pay five dollars a month, which is you know cheaper at least right. than paying the fifty dollars all at yeah, once. Yeah, if and you do annual, year, if you yeah. do the annual subscription, you actually get uh, it's like ten percent off, so you end up paying I think uh, fifty four dollars for the entire year. Right. So. so 
you're getting well, hundreds of recipes for, for them for the year. They're going to buy more than well, they'll buy a cookbook at least once a year. So it's like you rather right. just pay for that yeah. and you can constantly have it updated. So that's a, yeah. yeah and plus, like that. so by having the that. Patreon subscription, you have access yeah, to me, direct, direct access. access. You can message me directly. I'm very responsive, uh, you know, to my to my patrons. So. So that when they mess up a recipe, they can get mad at you. They can be like, yeah. what the hell? I tried this and it was horrible. What happened? Yeah, you know, a lot of times people just need to know, like, uh, you know, substitutions. Hey, I'm allergic to this mm -hmm. and I see you have it in the recipe. What can I swap I out? And we start a little dialogue and I, you know, kind of get them in the right, on the, in the right direction. I like that. That's Way nice. better value than certain $150 cookbooks. Yeah, or five or seven mm -hmm. months. <laughs> just get it from food people jesus stop asking me about metamucil it's fine sure whatever yeah but if God. you if you if you buy it and buy take it. it you feel great so at the end though we wanted to do something we wanted to ask you guys listening right now i'm not yeah. talking to these guys I'm talking to you this is you people listening in the car and on your head he's phones breaking the fourth wall right now all that <laughs> sort of stuff yes this is actually a podcast if you didn't know so what are your best you know hacks or tips for you know meal prepping because i get so many comments all the time like i actually do this and this and i'm like wow i've never thought of that before that's a great idea and i'm like i can't make a video for like every single one of these so you know send in whatever you know you have found over the years makes it a little bit more simple easy you know that sort of stuff um, we love hearing send... from you guys oh yeah, yeah it's I, awesome. I learned so much from my followers so much seriously all that you know i learned you're not supposed to keep milk in the fridge door did you guys know that like, it's uh, weird. yeah i did not know that i learned that from tiktok there's many things I've learned from TikTok. Some of them not true, but it doesn't matter. So <laughs> send in what you, you know, what works for you. And then we'll read, you know, get, and, you know, week, two weeks, whatever we decide to do it. Um, we'll read some off on the podcast, like the best tips and just try and all work together in this because we're all in this together at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah, for sure. We'll invite Zach back to read some of them if he's not sick <laughs> of us by then. <laughs> <laughs> I like no, it. I'd love to love to come back. But, you yeah. know, the single most important question I have for Zach is, are you ever going to braid that thing? <laughs> I I want to. I just, I don't think it's long enough yet. It's, can, it's that's not, about it's the size, own, it, that's about the size I had yet. when I started. Really? <laughs> yeah, when I started braiding it. It's not on your level yet. And you get, like, these little wooden beads that you can put into it, and it looks really sweet. I'm uh, I'm actually growing mine out again. I'm not shaving at least for six months. So it, nice. as, as, as you watch my videos, it'll be getting longer and longer. <laughs> That's what I like to see. Yeah. You know, is he really going to put all like, I'm pretty sure you have to put like beard oil and stuff in there. Oh, I'm pretty yeah. sure there's a yeah. whole thing. Yeah. And... yeah I mean, it, it's, it, you know, it's maintenance just like anything else, but yeah. Not that Liam would know about that, Mr. Soul Patch. <laughs> Listen, I, there's, I am glad I can't grow hair. It makes my life. Do you, oil, do you oil that up, Liam? <laughs> I don't do anything. People are like, what product do you put in your hair? I'm like, it just stands up. It literally yeah. just goes up. That's what it, I don't do anything. I have no. It's skin because you're excited routine. all the time. Your hair is just always on. I end. have lots of energy, and I'm very passionate about many things. Mostly pineapple not being on pizza, but there are lots of things. We're out all there. passionate about that. <laughs> yeah. 